Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria, the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary and professional astrologer. We are going to be talking about this Aquarius full moon that's going to be happening August 3rd, 2020, around 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the time that it is I pulled that chart. When I was getting ready, of course I knew that I wanted to pull the chart because I wanted to give you guys the astrological details, what it was that you could um, expect, how it's going to impact you, how it's going to affect you, and also how you can work with this energy so that it doesn't trip you up, it doesn't derail you. Because this is one of those full moons, and I've been saying this for a minute, that you really want to keep your eyes on this. This is a, a bit of a game changer. Not only is Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter... Neptune, Chiron, retrograde in the chart at the time of me filming this and at the time of the full moon. But if you look at all the planets right now, how they're impacting each other, how they're relating to each other, how they're um, connecting and contacting each other, it really is like ripping Velcro and slapping, like slamming pans together. That's what this energy feels like. I don't want to say this to freak you out. I don't want to say this to disrupt your peace or to make you disoriented from your path. If anything, my intention and my goal is to help keep you guys aligned for your highest and greatest good always. And I truly believe that when you have um, opposition and challenges happening in your life, obstacles presenting themselves, if you know how to work with that energy, you can make it work for you and not against you. And even that challenge, that opposition, that square could be the very thing that takes you to the very next level. So when I was getting ready, when I was pulling the charts, and even before I was pulling the charts, Spirit clearly told me, Jess, go ahead and break it down into chunks for each sign because each sign has a special specific message for them that we want them to receive, that we want them to hear. So for that reason, I do have the tarot pulled because one of my god-given gifts and talents um, that I love to work with and I love to share with you guys is my intuition and how messages flow and how they apply and that's what it is that I want to give to you guys. It's not just the study of astrology, again it's my intuition. So those are some gifts that, it is that I want to share with you guys in this video and I will link down in the description box um, the timestamps so that you can see your sign. I hope you guys don't mind. While I'm working, I'm going to be shuffling the cards for you. I'm working with, look at this, Three of Swords is at the very bottom of this uh, deck. And if you're wondering what deck this is, this is the Zombie Tarot. So before I get started, I want to say I really want to call in our spirit guides that are from the highest lights of the universe to give us messages that apply that resonate with us that help us to move past any difficulties that give us greater insight and clarity into our situation per sun moon and rising sign so i really want to guide you guys to check out every single one of those signs if you can your moon your rising and your sun sign okay the reason why is because your moon will show you your emotional needs during this time at the full moon and we're focusing on the full moon, by the way, so the Aquarius full moon. So there is this space of uh, detachment, but in this case, detachment means that you can reconnect, meaning like you dis disconnect from the chaos of the external world or things that are bothering you and plug into what you emotionally need in order to support yourself during this time, during the time of the full moon. So you can go ahead and check your moon sign for that your sun sign represents your per well what i'm gonna for the purpose of this video your you want to check your sun sign in order to give you additional clarity into your purpose your direction and your rising will give you additional insight into how to deal with things that are happening around you at the time of the full moon and then to come so i hope that makes sense if you guys have any questions about what your sun moon or rising sign is you can check out the website astro.com I'll link them down below in the description box as well and in the comments, but that's what it is that I use. It is by far the most accurate. I am not sponsored by them. Look at this. Look at this, you guys. Judgment, Eight of Wands, and Ace of Pentacles. These messages are already coming through. Okay, so let me just go ahead and say this, that there is, and we'll, t we'll talk about each of the, um, each of the signs uh, later on in the video, and again, you can check those timestamps down below. But there is so much going on. 
obviously. We have the Judgment card coming through. We have the Eight of Wands coming through. We have the Ace of Pentacles. Now, the one thing that is coming through for me is the idea of disruption, and I'm also hearing incoming, like it's incoming now. Eight of Wands is really about speed, movement, agility, but it comes from this higher source. It comes from this connection to the infinite abundance of the universe, that nothing is uh, blocked from us, nothing is off limits to us, but if that is truly the case, we wanna make sure that we're protecting our energy and we're protecting the things that are most, most valuable to us and that we're constantly doing our best to keep our energies in a high space. That means that we're not allowing ourselves to consume anything that is poisonous or toxic to us, especially now. As the ground is crumbling beneath us, as so to speak, our structure, our government, our normal way of life, those are things that are crumbling and falling away. If, if you're not a stranger to my YouTube channel, You've heard me say this multiple times before, that with Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter all retrograde in the sign of Capricorn, and even when they were direct, they were working to actively revamp the vision. They were actively re revamping everything. Um, the world as we know it are normal in order to usher in this new normal. So as this is happening, you know, we really have to have this space of grace and compassion and kindness and consideration for ourselves because we are also feeling that same pressure. Um, this will break down even further certain things in your life that do not support this greater vision. And while that, while that, that ground is being broken as this, you know, the shovel is, it, let's say there's, the, what I'm getting is this vision of cement and then breaking through with this, like um, a jackhammer thing, breaking through the cement clearing out those cement blocks and then seeing that you have dirt to work with. So then the rain waters come in and they water it and then that soil then becomes richer over time. Um, and then you can add, you know, as you're releasing certain things that then becomes the compost in order to, um, you know, make that soil more fertile. And then that's when you plant the seeds. This Ace of Pentacles here that I'm looking at, this is the seed. Okay, so a lot of you guys have been going through so much groundbreaking energy in your life, in your relationships, in your health, in your home environment, in your career, but that all of that is coming through again in order to plant that seed. It may seem like it's an attack, it may seem like things are chaotic, but in real, it's not. It's, it's actually, usually what happens, is, especially when we allow ourselves to work with the universe, is we step, we realize that this chaos is not chaos, it's divine order, and everything is being put into perfect place and perfect alignment. I want to say that at the time of this full moon, we have, look at this, you guys, four of wands, so it seems like it's bad, it, it seems like it's difficult, it seems like it's uh, tumultuous, but in reality, it's there to put you at the right place, at the right time, in the spot that it is that you most belong. Again, if this is our old normal and our old ways and these toxic things that we may have become accustomed to and called normal, the universe is so supportive and so encouraging of us. It says, listen, at the time of this full moon, I want you to usher in, and I've been saying this on my YouTube channel a lot in my last few videos, usher in this grand vision. Take the time out for you to sit with yourself to have a quiet time a quiet moment it's very tempting because there's a lot of distractions going on so it's that's what you can do that's what you can control is you're making this space for you to repair yourself meditate connect with the divine and this greater vision and you will gain clarity you absolutely will and this four of wands four of wands is the card of home and hearth and you know celebration and joy and this is something that this is something that every single one of us deserves. No one should ever be in a space of lack. If the universe was allowed to do what it what it does, this greater vision would mean that everyone would be prosperous, happy, thriving, and that everybody's gifts. We have a page of pentacles again showing up. So, well, the the energy of pentacles. So this is material manifestation, especially at the full moon. The full moon brings things to a culmination. The full moon brings things to a head. So, and then it also can actually, you know, when, if you set the intention, it can bring like actual material manifestation, meaning that it goes from being a vision, it goes from being a concept, an idea, to an actual, you know, thing that you can touch, thing, something that is real. Something that I want to tell you guys is that at the time of the full moon, um, 
you know, Mars is moving through the sign of uh, Aries, okay? So this impacts all of us. Mars is the planet of war. It's about how we want to achieve things, how we want to accomplish, how we want to fight for it, and the way that we fight for it. But th And that's not bad because it shows us that each one of us has this thing that is spurring us, that is sparking us, that is motivating us, that's making us ambitious, um, things that we want to fight for, things that we would like to accomplish. But the problem is, is that Mars is squaring off and will be squaring off with Jupiter, um, Pluto, Saturn, and it has to battle through these major planets. It has to battle through these major oppositions. And it's, I literally am clear at hearing that it's there to show you clearly what is important to you, what what is disrupting your peace, what needs to change. And I see that it's not, I don't see you changing it by fighting it because I feel as though if you fight and fight with it and you engage in, in it for too long, whatever that thing is, it will bring you down to its level. One, two, three, four, five, six. I see you guys still operating from a space of peace doing all that you can to protect your peace um, and to protect your creativity and to protect your relationship with the divine, your intention, these things. Again, if you're breaking ground and doing all these things, all this movement is happening within your life, it may seem like it's not. Some of you guys are really like, we're in quarantine times. So some of you guys feel like you're really stuck there's nothing to there's nothing to do. There's nowhere to go. You guys could really be using this time <clears throat> to <clears throat> break ground when it comes to your career, your purpose, your book that is that you're writing, <clears throat> your plans for the future, this program that is that you're uh, building up. So, um, or with children, or in your relationships, or with your fam your family, it, everything. This could be breaking old. Um, bad habits when it comes to how you take care of yourself, your health, your diet, your lifestyle, your exercise routine. There's nothing that's stopping you. So you have to break the ground. It's your your choice, your action that says it's time for you to break, brown, um, break ground in this. With the full moon happening in the sign of Aquarius, Aquarius is known for thinking light years ahead of everybody. Um, also, Aquarius is you know, does things for the bigger picture to the point where it can seem almost selfish to some people that don't understand that everything that Aquarius is doing at that time is to help the greater good. And you are part of the greater good. So no matter what your sun, moon, or rising sign is, I want you guys to hear this, that there is a space where you have to emotionally pull back from things that are disrupting you, derailing you. I'm also getting a sense that for a lot of you guys, you have to disconnect, um, detach from certain people from a space that may seem very comfortable to you, but may not, you know, be, uh, contribute to your relief. I'm seeing a lot of you guys patching up certain aspects within yourself, emotional triggers within yourself that are making themselves known at this time. There's a space and feeling of isolation, alone, abandonment, not feeling strong enough, not feeling masculine enough, not feeling like you're doing enough, not feeling man enough, not feeling mature enough. There's a space of am I enough, am I enough? And spirit, it, it's. I want you guys to hear me that it's not that spirit is attacking you. It's not that spirit is trying to make you feel bad. It's saying that, listen, we don't want you to feel bad. This subconscious belief that is that you have about yourself, this subconscious way that fuels the, how you do things is not conducive to you thriving. So take the time to disconnect and to detach, detach yourself from your responsibilities, from your obligations, from this expectation to what other people say and want for you and even maybe what you may want for yourself. Detach from that just for a minute to plug into the energy of the moon, to plug into the energy of your emotional self, to plug into the energy of the divine and allow yourself to allow this storm that's been brewing subconsciously within you to heal, to, to have this sense of relief, um, to feel the space of compassion again, to feel inspired. That's what this full moon is really going to give to you and what's going, what it's going to bring to you. Mercury is still moving through the sign of Cancer, so every single one of us needs to feel and know and hear and believe and speak words of kindness, compassion, and nurturing. If, if there's a lot of sensitivities that are being triggered here, you guys. I really want you guys to hear this. There's a lot of sensitivities getting triggered here. Um, it, it comes from a space of, again, spaces where you felt abandoned, spaces where you felt uncomfortable. 
um, spaces where there was a loss or a lack of emotional support or whatever the case is. Everyone is different, but there's, you know, there's definitely a wound getting triggered here. And if not, because if literally 11% of you guys is what it is that I'm hearing right now, 11 to 15% of the population is not getting triggered in this way, then if that's truly the case, if you're that 11%, then this is you focus, focusing on your family, focusing on building your family, focusing on strengthening your family, focusing on um, strengthening your relationship with yourself and your, your spirit guides. That's the 11%, but for the majority of you guys, we really are working through these wounds, um, this karma, like this karmic lesson, these major karmic lessons. Okay, um, Mars, again, squaring off with Jupiter at the time of this full moon. The, the full moon, again, is going to be on the 3rd at roughly around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is the time that I pulled the chart. But the thing is, is that it's not felt just at this full moon. It's going to be felt before that. We're under the influence of it now. If you're watching as I upload, which is August 2nd on a Sunday, into the next week. So there's a lot, and you can really continue to work with this energy to manifest, and I'm gonna look into this for you guys, into each of the, um, your sun, your moon, and your rising sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little pause, take a little breather, and look at, you know, set the cards up. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm, again, I'm working with the zombie, the zombie tarot. Look at this, the lover card, the lover's card at the very bottom. But I'll be working with the zombie tarot, and you can check your timestamps down below. And again, be sure to check your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign for all the information that, is that you're going to need at the time of this full moon and then moving forward. All right, my loves. So if you are an Aries sun, moon, or rising, the cards that I pulled for you are five of swords and ace of wands reverse. The first thing that I'm seeing with this and the first thing that I think about is the fact that your the sign that rules or the planet that rules your sign, Mars, is legit squaring off with all of these planets. You guys are going to be feeling this the most even though this full moon is happening in the sign of Aquarius. Check to see where Aquarius rules within your chart, but your energy, protect your energy. This is not just spiritual energy, it's your physical energy. Who are you fighting with? Why are you fighting that, fighting fighting with them? What are the thoughts that is that you're thinking? Not every argument, not every battle has your name written on it and you don't need to be involved. I understand that you are passionate. I understand that you are ignited. You might be fighting for the underdog. There might be something that is that you're believing in. There might be something is that you're fighting for. I just heard for some of you guys, it's career. It's, I don't know why the word is prospects. You're fighting for these prospects, prospects these things that you envision for yourself that you see for others this greater picture again but it spirit is clearly telling you to protect your energy to protect your vibe um because there's too much there's too much at risk there's too much um things and the other thing that i'm getting is that it's very unpredictable it's very unstable so i'm i'm almost feeling as though especially with ace of wands this is like you could poop out but i don't see it as pooping out i see it as this could really turn a mountain into a molehill. Well, making a molehill into a mountain, um, making something bigger than what it actually is, or the fact that you're biting off more than you can chew at the time of this full moon. So, and that could be detrimental to you. That could really be detrimental to you. That could be detrimental to your energy. Um, it could turn into something way bigger. It could, I don't wanna say that it could be violent, but it, it doesn't serve you. Whatever it is, it doesn't serve you. And Mars squaring off with, um, you know, Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, it's overly doing it. It's going, it's pushing it over the top. And these powers, whatever it is that you're fighting with, whatever it is that you're trying to fight against, it's seriously like locked. It's very stubborn. It doesn't want to move. It doesn't want to switch up. It doesn't want to do better. It has its own way of doing things. So if you are a sun, Aries sun, moon arising, you really have to see that this is what you're working, what's working against you. What, and if that's truly the case, you have to ask yourself, okay, why is this important for me to fight it right now? And if this is something that's important, is there a way that I can, you know, defend it and defend my title or get my point across without it triggering bigger? 
if you realize that other people, they're not trying to work with you, they have no desire to compromise, they have no desire to see things from your perspective or how things hurt you or how they impact you or you vice versa, you have to give it a break. You have to give it a rest. Five of Swords shows that no one wins. So at the time of this full moon, I'm really seeing you guys. Let me go ahead and shuffle some additional cards as far as advice. I'm really seeing you guys trying your hardest. Yeah, your defenses are up right now. So I'm seeing you protecting your energy. Um, I'm seeing you really like restorative energy. Queen of Swords, you guys are lit. You guys are lit. You guys are lit at the time of the full moon. I don't know why, but I'm getting the energy of um, and King of Wands. So these people are ready to go, okay? And they know who they are. They know what they want. It's not energy that changes very quickly or effortlessly. So I'm seeing um, physical activity for you guys. Some of you guys, yes, see physical activity, Six of Wands. Some of you guys really need to get out and get out of your head and back into your body. But again, if that's truly the case, don't overdo it. Don't hurt yourself. Um, Mars squaring off at Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn is notoriously can create like accidents, physical accidents. But if you are being safe, then you're good. But at the time of the full moon, what I see you're using is using that fuel to set intention for you know, breaking ground in your life so that it doesn't feel like you're fighting against the whole world or against a certain person. Set intention that their energy opens up, that it's a bit more flexible, that it's thinking about the future long term and not so much here in the present. And I'm also seeing you guys um, setting intention for outlets, physical outlets in order to burn some steam off and burn some energy off. I hope that that makes sense. Aries, sun, moon, and rising, let me know down in the comments how this resonates with you. All right, so the next thing is Taurus, Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Rising. All right, Knight of Swords and the Hierophant. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this. Knight of Swords and the Hierophant. Taurus, you, especially with the Hierophant here, you are typically known for being really stuck in your ways. And by stuck, I just feel as though stuck is probably not the right word, and you're probably triggered by the fact that I said stuck, okay? I apologize. What I want to say is that you have certain things that work for you that you would like to hold on to, that you would like to continue to incorporate, right? But at the time of this full moon, I really want you guys to think past what has been working for you. And I want you guys to maybe consider the fact that there might be some groundbreaking changes when it comes to the things that it is that you do in your day-to-day -day life that maybe you can switch up just a little bit and get a better reward. What I just am hearing for you is do less, gain more. So even though Taurus, you may be set in your ways or you are accustomed to certain things being a certain way or you like to do, you feel as though you can only achieve success or things can be this way and in order to get this outcome, consider the fact that there might be other avenues that could um, create a positive change, a positive result that you can then incorporate um, for the long term, okay? So that's what I'm seeing um, for you, Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising, is really be open to the idea of creativity, um, considering other people's ideas, considering other people's perspectives. You don't have to take it immediately, but allow yourself the time to digest it and hear what is what is it they're saying. Watch what is, how things are unfolding. I'll listen to the universe, listen to the divine, listen to your ancestors, your guides, whoever it is that's working with you um, and whoever it is that you want to work with to inspire you so that this new, um, you know, these rules and this routine that is that you have your, for yourself or in your ability to even receive abundance because Taurus, you also have the uh, Uranus sitting in your sign right now. So Uranus is the planet of literally the jackpot, and it's also very unpredictable and erratic. It's really hard for astrologers to see what's going to happen here with this sign. And with Uranus squaring off with the sun and with Uranus squaring off with the moon, basically what this shows me is that you it's as just as you're getting inspired, you can also feel uh, attacked, emotionally vulnerable, exposed, revealed, meaning that you feel as though you know your way of doing things is, is switching up so quickly and you're uncomfortable. But allow yourself, again, if at the time of the full moon, detach. 
detach from this expectation of it has to be this way in order for me to be comfortable it has to be this way in order for things to reassure me my, my family my goals my business it has to be this way for me to make the most money uranus sitting in your sign is clearly saying that it could occur at any moment at this abundance this abundance this blessing could literally come in in a way that you don't expect that could be random that is faded so Taurus, at the time of the Aquarius full moon, I really want to challenge you to test the universe, test your faith, to put it out there and to consider the fact that this blessing can come in for you, you know, from a space that is that you're not expecting. So set intention for that. Set intention for this blessing, for comfort, luxury, stability, um, love, romance, all of those things that it is that you're wanting for yourself. Uh, security, all of those things that and then some allow allow the universe the space to surprise you all right gemini gemini sun moon and rising you have the king of cups reversed um i flipped it up right for you and also the three of wands so gemini at the time of this um full moon for the full moon in aquarius i feel as though you are really emotionally getting swallowed up you know the, this full moon for you gemini sun moon and rising or sun moon or rising it's it's really emotionally triggering a lot and i feel as though this is kind of uncomfortable for you gemini because it's not that you don't like to spend too much time focusing on your feelings your emotions and it's not that it makes you uncomfortable it's just that you would prefer to kind of not um spend too much time you know emotionally dabbling in things that it's like what's the point you know what i mean like there's so many things to do there's so many things to explore so many friends to hang out with so many things going on that you you don't have the time and the space but this emotion is incoming you have to feel gemini i'm really getting this space right now that you are not allowing yourself to Feel what it is that you're feeling. Process what it is that you're feeling. It almost feels like you're kind of pushing it off to the side or being like, it's not that important. It is that important. When the King of Cups is reversed, he really, there could be a serious blockage. And that's what it is that I'm getting at the time of this full moon for you guys. There's this serious blockage when it comes to allowing yourself to express yourself, allowing yourself to feel what it is that you're feeling, and then also an ability to share it with other people. So it's interesting because with the Aquarius full moon, this is usually, and the Aquarius, um, well, the moon squaring off with uh, Uranus, there is this, like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to focus on this. I'm out. I don't have the potential to deal with this. It can be very stubborn. Um, you would never know that it's considered stubborn, but it, it's really like you're running away from this thing that is bothering you. But with the three of wands, this energy wants to come in. This energy is coming in. This message is coming in. There's people that want to connect with you, but it might not be in the way that feels comfortable to you. It actually makes you feel uncomfortable. It, if it almost feels as though if you get that support, if you consider what's coming through, if you hear what someone is saying, that it's going to make you feel more than you're comfortable with. Gemini, I want you to take this time to detach from the outside world to reconnect and to attach to your internal world. I know that it may feel uncomfortable, but your spirit needs it and you would, you need to hear certain things. There are certain things that spirit and the divine want you to hear, want you to receive when it comes to messages, other people's intentions, how much people love you, your, how much supported you are, how encouraged you are in the next steps that is that you're taking, Gemini. I know that you really kind of want to just disconnect and from reality almost is what it is that I'm getting from you, but just allow yourself to take that time and that space, especially at the time of the full moon, to detach from the external world in order to reattach to the internal world. This is more about your feelings um, and relying, I'm seeing physically relying on other people, emotionally relying on other people. Gemini, that's something that you're not used to doing. Or um, Gemini, sun, moon, and rising. It's your desire to kind of be like, oh, I don't need anybody, this is not bothering me. It is bothering you. And I just feel as though it's not even so much, it, even spirit is saying that take if you've been taking this to us, share it with your friends, share it with your family, get this thing off of your heart. Don't just keep it in the ethers, really get it out. You might have to have a nice cleansing, emotional release, like a cry session. Again, I know that you might be uncomfortable with that Gemini, but spirit is supporting you through it, so just consider that. All right, let's move on to Cancer. 
Okay, Cancer. <laughs> uh, okay, so Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. You have the Moon card and you also have <laughs> the Judgment reversed. So basically what I'm seeing, I don't know if you guys have seen <laughs> the movie Garden State when they, one of the guys, he comes up with this brilliant idea for a silent Velcro and he has this major man, uh, mansion and all these tools and things that is that he like toys and things that he can play with and he's supposed to be living the dream and he goes back to his hometown and he just literally he goes back to no matter how much abundance and blessings you know and how abundantly provided he was with this jackpot in his life um cancer he has to go back to his hometown and when he does go back to his hometown there's girls that are throwing themselves at him but he still does not emotionally feel satisfied he still feels sad and depressed there's no amount of drugs or anything that the externally that could plug up the feelings within his heart and anyways there i don't know why i just went off and saying that story maybe that message applies to you cancer but what really was why i saw that was he has his bow and arrow he lights it on fire and then he shoots it up and the girl and the guy who are his friends are trying really hard not to get hit by that bow and arrow they don't know where the bow and arrow is going to land they don't know you know if they're going to get hit by the bow and arrow like they just he just literally shoots it up in the sky cancer that's what i'm seeing for you is that there is something subconscious um, that is showing up in your dreams, that's showing up in your meditations, that's saying, yo, stop trying to avoid this. Mercury is moving through your sign, Cancer. Um, cancer, moon, sun, or rising. Right? Either way, Mercury is moving through that. Mercury is trying to deliver a message to you. It's trying to do everything in its power in order to make sure that you are clear on how this does impact you. I know that it might make you uncomfortable. I know that you may not know what's next. I don't. I know that you feel like you might not be in danger, but you might be vulnerable. You're not. You're in good hands. Spirit is looking out for you. Mercury is the planet of communication and messages. Not only is this things that is that you hear via text, via email, phone call, conversations face to face, not only is it that, it's also subconsciously these symbols, these synchronicities, these signs that are showing up and saying, please pay attention to this. Please stop avoiding it. Please stop running from it. Cancer, we know that you're strong. We know that you're capable. We know that you are a leader for the rest of the Zodiac and that it's your leadership that pushes us all to really transform and be better versions of ourselves, etc., etc. We know that you want to help other people. We know that you want the best for yourself as well. But you can't do that if you're trying to run away and skirt away from these signs, these signals, and these synchronicities. I'm really getting um, um, another call to ask the guides, ask your guides, what is this that is coming through? Six of Cups, it's things from your past. It's things from your memories. It's things that you might um, need to feel in order to feel comforted and supported. Um, Six of Cups is really the, the card of, you know, walking down memory lane, wanting to feel um, nurtured, wanting to reconnect. There's certain memories, certain things from the past, especially with Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn directly opposing the energy of Cancer. There are certain things that are trying to retake you to that you want to kind of recount. So what is this about this? You know, it's almost as if, as if it's something that should have been left in the past, that should have been put to rest. Yeah, we have King of Swords, we have King of, King of Wands, the Star card, the Emperor, Six of Pentacles, Ten of Swords. This could be father figure issues, this could be paternal, this could be strength, this could be someone advocating you, this could actually be masculine energy, a person. Um, someone who's an, a leader, someone who's independent, someone who was emotionally distant from you, someone that you felt like you deserved more from, from them, that you know that you could have received more, but they actively chose not to give it to you. These are things that you have to let go. This is a feeling of, it's not, we're not pointing fingers at them, it's the fact that, you know, you, you wanted more from them, you want their support, but for some reason that energy is gone right now and it's making you feel very... Um, disconnected. So Cancer, what it is that I'm seeing at the time of the full moon is allow yourself to sit with that vision of them. Look at this, Nine of Swords. You guys are really upset about this. This is really creating a tumultu uh, tumultuous energy in your heart and your spirit. What I want you to do is to create this, this is what Spirit is telling me. At the time of the full moon, before you set intention, I really want you to sit with yourself and the thing, the person that it is that you feel like you lack. 
and I want you to envision, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but you need to use your subconscious tools. If spirit is coming through to you in the subconscious way by using symbols and um, you know signs and synchronicities, then you have to also uh, uh, show up for yourself in that way. This means that whatever it is that you need to receive, whatever it is that you need to hear, envision it, picture it, have that conversation. If there's certain things that you need to let go of, if there's certain things that um, support or things that you need to hear from a specific person or from a specific memory, give yourself that memory, visualize it. Again, the moon is all about secrets, subconscious, healing, like like healing, dream work, and, and that type of, you know, the dark, the unknown, right? If that is truly what's showing up for you, you can make this work for you. You can make this uh, benefit you. So basically what you do is instead of, you know, trying to hide from it and run from it, you confront it. You visualize again in your in your mind's eye the thing that it is that you are needing the most and stop trying to run from it and pretend like you're not that you're strong and that you don't need anybody or you don't need anything that you're good. I'm good. We know you're good, but Cancer, sit with it. You know what I mean? And again, Cancer, you are really coming from this space of a lot of emotion. And it's all here in your heart. So you can really want to kind of like protect that for the sake. And I'm almost hearing for the sake of other, others. Like you're protecting it to protect others. But Cancer, you need to feel this for yourself. You don't need to be strong for everyone. Right now, you, you want to be strong for yourself. At least that's what Spirit is saying at the time of this Aquarius full moon. So what is it I'm seeing for you is, again, detach from your mind, detach from your logic, detach from, ouch, um, hitting your elbow on your citrine crystal. Detach from your thoughts and really go into the subconscious. Detach from what logically makes sense to you and go into your subconscious and have that conversation. Visualize yourself. If there's someone that you miss, visualize them giving you a hug and you feeling supported. Um, also, when I see father figure, I feel like some of you guys may feel disconnected, like detached from your father, but they, they don't go anywhere. They're always here, they're always present. So you can visualize them coming through and supporting you in the way that is that you need, and then you can go ahead and set intention after you're coming from a space of support, because the last thing I want you to do is to manifest emptiness as you're setting intention at the time of the full moon, okay? All right, the next sign is Leo, Leo sun, moon, and rising. From what I'm seeing for you is the Ace of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles. I love that. The Ace of Pentacles is reversed, but that's okay because the King of Pentacles can take anything that he wants, anything that he has, and build with it. He has an idea. He has a seed. Leo, what it is that I'm seeing for you at the time of this Aquarius full moon is truly using, being creative. <laughs> That's what it is I'm seeing. Leo, I don't want you to block your creativity. I want you to add more time to encourage, support, and foster creativity. Leo, you rule creativity. The sun, it's it's your season. It's your it's your time. The sun is moving to the sign of Leo and in wanting and and the sun is squaring Uranus. Uranus is sitting in the sign of Taurus. Taurus is about tangible values. Um Money, money, King of Pentacles energy written all over this. I want you guys to really take this time out for yourself to detach so that you can get creative, get inspired, get brilliant. I really am seeing you guys focusing on big, 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 big. Some of you guys are supposed to be manifesting luxury, luxury, okay? So like legit diamonds, rubies, pearls, whatever it is that you, that you name it, Leo, you're meant to adorn yourself and, and you're meant to decorate it. I'm really seeing gemstones specifically, but I'm really thinking that this could be you using crystals, um, but precious. They almost feel very precious. So there might be something passed on. I actually just had a client last week who had this. She had a ruby come through, um, but she could pull her power from the energy of the ruby and what it means for her, her blood lineage, her ancestry. So I'm seeing almost, she wasn't a Leo though, but I'm seeing that almost happening for you guys, that there's something, some precious stone that you can use at the time of this uh, full moon, the Aquarius full moon, to tap into your power 
and to manifest more of that. If there's precious stones that are that are rare in value, that increase their value, what is that message? How does that message apply to you? Okay, and if there's one, if there's a time for you to manifest it and to set intention for it, it's now. Let's say the ruby or the gem that you're we're talking about, let's say it's not an actual material thing. What if it's an actual person that's quality that you can count on that is precious to you, that is treasure to you? You feel so treasured by them or you want to treasure this person, this connection, this relationship. That ruby, that gem, whatever it is, is a reminder of the fact that you can have it. That sometimes you have to work for it, meaning set the intention, put it out there. But either way, it's not that it's, it's not that you can't find it. You will. It's not that you'll find it just walking on the street. You might have to put yourself in the right place at the right time in order to receive it. So maybe that's what the message of the gem is for you, Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Is like if you if you're walking down the street, you're not. Chances are you're not going to find a diamond sitting on the road. But you know that diamonds exist because you've seen other people have it. So you put yourself in the space where you are working on yourself, working on your abundance or working on whatever. And then you go to a space where diamonds are at. And then you, when the time is right, you make that purchase or it's gifted to you. That's what it is that I'm seeing, Leo. That's a very specific message, but that's what's coming through. I'm really seeing quality, quality. Sometimes, again, you may not see it sitting on the road, but don't let that discourage you, making you feel like, oh, I've never walked by on the road and seen a diamond ring or a diamond necklace or a diamond tennis bracelet or whatever, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So, Leo, what is it I'm seeing for you is really getting into that space of creativity and play, however this message applies to you. Okay, Leo, sun, moon, and rising. So, you know, set intention for that luxury, set intention for that gift, that blessing, that treasure. What is it that you treasure the most? That is what you're about to receive. And for some reason, Leo, I personally feel as though that, that message was enough, but spirit feels like it's not. Okay, there is a probably a truth, a conversation, words that is that you guys need to have. Um, and also willpower. Leo, you are always overlooked for your heart. You know what I mean? Like people look at your energy and they don't take you seriously, but it's your heart and your passion that fuels you. So pull from your heart space in order to have the willpower, in order to set intention, in order to connect with the right people. You might actually have to be the one to step out and put yourself again in a space that's uncomfortable. That's almost kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Um, Aquarius full moon. Aquarius is known for doing different and that Aquarius is not concerned about coming across um, loud, obnoxious, um, you know, weird, whatever, who cares? doesn't matter. If you put, if you reach out, if you set the intention, if you make the first move, you would be surprised what comes through, especially at the time of the full moon. And that's what's coming through with the ace of swords. Again, it's about truth, honesty, clarity, precision, and making that first move. And that's what is I'm seeing for you, Leo, sun, moon, and rising. So hopefully that makes sense. And at the end of the day, the, the reward is whatever it is that you truly treasure. So set intention for that and then do it. Make that move, okay? Virgo, let's move on to Virgo. <laughs> okay, Virgo, we have four of wands. We have eight of wands. Four of wands is the card of uh, support. Is my camera focusing? Okay, support, stability, family, marriage, um, having fun, partying, enjoying your time. And Eight of Wands is the card of speed, movement, momentum. Things happening very, very quickly, very, very rapidly. First things first, Virgo, I want to reach out to you. Virgo, sun, moon, and rising, your anxiety. I don't know why that's coming through. I don't know why that's coming through, Virgo. I just feel as though you might be very anxious. You're in your head. You might be irritable, annoyed. Um, anxiety sometimes has an interesting way of showing up as far as um, irritation. Virgo, there's something that I feel like you really need to say goodbye to. You really need to let it go. Um, emotionally, it feels, uh, I don't know why this isn't focusing, but maybe that's a message all by itself. Um, it feels as though, you know, you kind of see so far. Look, we have all this lightning. It's very emotionally like tumultuous and revealing and sad and 
maybe there's something that has left, something that has departed, something that you are being called to leave and let behind, leave it behind. Um, but Virgo, I'm just hearing you're coming home, baby. Like you're coming home. It doesn't matter what the outside world looks like. If you are being called to move forward, um, or if you see things moving on, you know, it's, it's not that it doesn't impact you because it emotionally does. It's just the fact that like, that doesn't take away from your security. It doesn't take away from your, you know, your happiness, your joy, unless you allow it to. So Virgo really with the eight of wands reverse, I just am getting like the spins and I'm also getting agitation frust it, and that's the thing too is that anxiety again it can sometimes show up in a way of being overly anxious and, or um, annoyed irritable frustrated um kind of did, 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 like kind of a tacky meaning like your words might offend people you might hear what someone is saying and take it personally virgo just really take some time for yourself right now especially with the um aquarius full moon this is energy that you typically don't have of easy time with yes look look virgo look literally confirming eight of swords is the card of anxiety that's exactly what it was that i was saying was it was it not eight of swords is the card of anxiety it's in your head it's what you're thinking it's you know i don't see it as fear as the of the unknown it's the fact that you've worked so hard to get where you're at and you don't want anything to come in and disrupt that and to ruin it and to muck up your energy and you know, you Virgo too, you strive for perfection, you strive for organization, you strive for things to make sense. And when things are moving around, swirling around, not only in the external world, but in your internal world, in your mind, it starts to really mess you up. But like I said, you're coming home. Virgo, don't forget who you are. You're the queen of pentacles here, whether you're a male or female, however you identify, you're the queen of pentacles. You know, she can literally make, take a potato and turn it into a full meal. And that meal will be so good. It will be so good, so stick to your ribs, so wonderful, so supportive. Virgo, wherever you're at, I just am getting a sense of you're coming home, you're building your home. Don't be concerned about what is you're called to leave. Don't be concerned about who is called to leave because you are really creating this stability, this stability for yourself. That's where this change is coming from, Virgo really but as this is happening i'm getting i'm really getting a strong sense of anxiety um and internal conflict and tension that's coming across as um agitated irritable virgo you know what works for you you know what doesn't feel good for you you know where your boundaries lie four of wands is the card of home hearth and support and fun but what we don't talk about enough is that there's certain boundaries that are there to protect it, that create that into a safe space. Virgo, go to, go home. That's what it is that I'm hearing. I'm coming home. You're coming home, Virgo. You're going to this space that is all yours. You don't have to share it with anyone or share it with anything. It's literally the space that you can go to that is predictable. And maybe that's the thing, Virgo, is that you might want to have you know, certain security, certain routines that you just don't compromise on. Either way, I'm saying all of this because I myself am a Virgo and I can think worst case scenario sometimes. I can think of everything that could go wrong. But, and I'm just covering my bases with that, but Virgo, literally, what Spirit is trying to tell me, to tell you, is that the outcome and where you're at right now, you may not be able to see it, but you are in really good hands. You're, you're cementing and solidifying a home and support and family and marriage and friendships that are long lasting. I know Virgo that you're looking at, but eight of cups, there's something moving and there's things changing. They're just adjusting. They're just adjusting. It's okay. It's not that it's um, changing and departing out of your life and creating all this chaos and disruption. Like, honestly, look at this, Virgo. You have four of wands here, and it's literally this party, but I don't know about you, but can you see the mess that this party is creating? Just allow yourself to enjoy the moment. You don't have to put everything in, in its order and its place. It doesn't all have to make sense in order for all of it to work out, Virgo. So really kind of allow yourself to... Go to your space for just a moment, even as the party is raging. 
You might even see people flying out. That's another thing too. There, I'm hearing the word departure. Someone's getting in a plane and flying out, or you might be flying out in a way. But, and that might create some mourning. You are happy where you're at, or you're getting really close to being very happy to where you're at. But there is this sense of um, infinite incompletion. But Virgo, that is not what spirit is wanting you to focus your intention on spirit is focusing on the fact that you are so supported you're building a home you are coming home so focus on that don't focus on all of these tiny trivial pieces or all of this movement things that don't make sense to you focus on you know solidifying what you know that you want for yourself queen of pentacles think about how luxurious she is and supported she is and how hard she worked to get here and how deserving she is of all of these things. Focus on that. Set intention around that. Focus on the home and the the the, the heart. Focus on meals. <laughs> I don't know why that's coming through, but food. All of those things are yours, Virgo. And anything that's changing is truly just just an adjustment. That is all. That is it. Um, Virgo, let me just shuffle one more card for you, my love. I feel at the full moon, the Aquarius full moon, you're just like, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable. King of Swords and the Star card. And also this card wants to jump out, Nine of Wands. So really, again, Virgo, um, I just feel as though, you know, try your best to change what you're focusing on and what you're allowing into your space. You might actually have to tell some people, like if the party's over, you know, you guys have to go. I'm really seeing this space of, can you leave? Like, get out of my space, so to speak. Um, bring good energy, bring peace, bring joy. Don't come in and add additional stress. Don't allow certain things to come in and add additional stress. It's really overwhelming you, Virgo. King of Swords is all about boundaries and speaking up. And not that it's not, not, not that he's not concerned or not that you're not concerned about other people's feelings, but it's the fact that you have to prioritize your own needs right now, Virgo. And that is literally your star. That's your North Star is that you are focusing on any decision that you're making, Virgo. It's there to give you the most support, the most love, the most encouragement and to bring you home. So any choice that or boundary that you're creating, people have to respect and you have to respect the fact that you're doing it for the greater good and that you see that there is a better way of doing things. At the same time, don't get so caught up in the chaos and the noise of other that other people bring and the stress that other people bring. You're allowed to have those boundaries there so that you can um, you know, allow yourself to receive the outcome of the star card, which is I've really been wanting for this for myself. I've been really wanting healing. I've been really wanting peace. Um, and I just don't want to compromise on that. But in this, the movement towards that, don't allow yourself to get tripped up, if that makes any sense. Okay, so Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Let me know down in the comments how that applies to you. All right, let's move on to the next set. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, Libra. Libra, Libra, sun, moon, and rising. What it is I'm seeing for you is the high priestess and the five of wands. Okay. Um, high priestess and the five of wands, Libra. You know, this is totally about disconnection. <laughs> this is really, especially at the Aquarius full moon, you want to disconnect from the noise of the external world, disconnect from the expectations from other people, maybe keep some things that is, I just feel Libra that you had this desire to want to share and to work with everybody and build with everybody and factor everybody in. And it's just not going to work. I know, I know. I think that you have to be selfish, Libra, in some sense of the word that it's just like, not everybody, not everything can be brought into it. Um, what you're building, what you're creating, what you need, what you want, what you're setting intention for. So be very almost selfish when it comes to what you're manifesting, what you're focusing your intention on, what you're focusing your energy on. The high priestess does not share all. She simply doesn't. Um, even, and that's the other thing too, the high priestess connects straight up to the divine and she understands that even the divine does not share all. There are some mysteries, some things that are, are meant to be left unknown. Five of wands 
is and the high priestess together is this you know you really are trying to work with everyone build everyone in and there's only so much there's only so far that you can go with that there's only so much so much that you can do with that before it just turns into chaos so libra sun moon and rising what is it i'm seeing for you is to just kind of go your way when it comes for just a bit at least at the time of the full moon um the aquarius full moon and aquarius energy is known for being very detached and removed from other people for the greater good. So Libra, what it is I'm seeing is that you're taking some time out for yourself in your sacred space, at your altar, going for a walk, um, in your meditation, setting intention, working your magic, doing whatever it is that you want in order to help things to better work together and realize that not everybody can and will be factored in to your plans. I hope that that makes sense. And that's not a bad thing. Libra is actually pretty good. All right, that's a quick message for Libra, but that's what's coming through. Um, Libra, sun, moon, and rising. Okay, so just be a little bit selfish there. Scorpio, Scorpio, I'm seeing three of pentacles and five of pentacles reversed. Okay, so three of pentacles and five of pentacles reversed. At the time of this full moon, Scorpio, you are really feeling like you deserve way more than it is that you've received. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising, you are really wanting more for yourself. You feel as though there's a space of lack. And I feel like you are going to use this Mars energy, this Mars square Saturn, I'm sorry, Mars, yeah, Mars square Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter in order to push past and be like, if you're not going to give it to me, well, I'm going to go get it to myself. And I respect that. I absolutely respect that 6,000%. I just feel as though there's some people who are going to feel um attacked there's going to be some people who are going to feel like well just give me some time there's going to be some people who are going to fight you who are not on your side scorpio and you know this you have five of swords and knight of swords coming through there's going to be some people who say some things there's you might even have be really strongly provoked to chop some people ten of swords just chop them out of your life, remove them out of your life, you're dead to me, I'm moving on. I have this vision, I know I want more for myself, but Scorpio, what it is that I'm seeing is, I don't wanna say cool your jets, but I'm just getting a sense of moving quieter, yeah. Moving quieter, if you are cutting someone out, they don't necessarily need to know about it, and you might actually need them in the future especially at the time of the Aquarius full moon. Um, again, listen to your intuition, listen to what spirit is telling you, but what I'm getting is a very forceful, very cut, dry, you know, you're either with me or you're against me. And that's this very cutthroat vibe of Scorpio, which I love and I appreciate. My Scorpio people, I love you guys. You know, sun, moon, and rising, I fucks with you hard. Um, but as a Virgo, and as a, you know, as a supporting intuitive and what's coming through, you know, I just feel as though there might be more. There might be a connection there that you can build or something that you can gain. I don't feel as though you're using people. I don't feel that way, but I feel like they might help you in some way and it will just make your path a little easier for you to actually get what you want. And I think that you'd be surprised who will come in and help you out. See, Six of Pentacles just came through and Six of Pentacles, and here you are, Queen of Swords, being like, I will light that ass up. So what it is I'm seeing and what Spirit is saying is that you would be really surprised how people can really help you to get what it is that you know that you deserve. So, Scorpio, I'm seeing you connect, um, building connections. Um, I'm seeing you build connections and alliances and friendships and using the Internet and different communities and tribes in order to help you to achieve what you want. Don't do it all by yourself. Don't do it. Well, if you're not going to do it, well, I'm going to go do it. There's going to be people who do want to work with you and do want to support you and do want to contribute to you, Scorpio. So be open to that. And at the time of the full moon, I see you um, tapping into your friendship circles. Um, again, social media in information and resources that can help you to get exactly what it is that you're looking for. Set intention for it. Put it out there. And then once you ask, once you know what it is that you want, 
then put the information out, like put the words out there. Also, Mercury is moving to the sign of Cancer. You get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar, okay? So that means that you can get more support and more build more of a solid ground by being sweet than versus being cold, sour, you know what I mean? So just try to loosen up, try to um, be a little bit, you know, work with the more sensitive spots. Realize that other people are sensitive too. Um, work with them in that way, okay? So that's what I'm seeing for a Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Or, you know what? You know, you might actually um, have a friend say something or do something that you're just like, what? I can't believe that you said that. I can't believe that you did that. And just be have a little bit, don't, you know, be so rash right now. There's a lot of energy that wants to be rash, that wants to come in and cut. But Scorpio, I just think that you would do better if you didn't if that makes any sense. Just trust me. All right, next sign is um, Sagittarius. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. These cards are for you. All right, you have the Hermit card and you also have the Page of Wands. Sagittarius, in, in a nutshell, I'm really seeing you disconnecting from the rest of the world and doing some uh, self-study, reading books, um, spending time with yourself. I feel as though I don't see you being alone, even though the Hermit card is about being alone and in your own space. If you choose to be alone, you can do that, Sagittarius. But I'm really seeing you focusing on knowledge. I'm really seeing you focus on um, learning and growing and exploring from a space of research, from a space of, um, you know, using the internet in order to find you know, your next move, your next path, where are we going, what are we up to. Again, King of Swords showed up for you, so this is really about logic and planning and, you know, gaining information and organizing it in a way that makes sense for you. I feel as though you've been kind of overwhelmed, Sagittarius, lately. You've been kind of stressed out, and I feel, especially with Page of Wands, this card is usually, when it's upright, it's excited, it's you know ready to take a risk, ready to put itself out there, ready to have fun. But Sagittarius, either you're not having enough fun or you're stressed out by everything that's been going on. And it really is going to help you to take some time to rebuild your energy to, I'm, I just heard the word lethargic, like you're feeling very lethargic, very exhausted, sleepy, burnt out, so to speak. Um, so I think that at the time of the Aquarius full moon, Sagittarius, you're going to be using this full moon in order to gain information, in order to, <clears throat> you know, find better ways of doing things, but also reading for pleasure, reading for joy, um, you know, just self, the very quiet. Sagittarius, that's kind of different for you in some way. Sometimes you like to be on the go, but, you know, it just seems like the whole world <clears throat> is <clears throat> on hold right now. <clears throat> Pardon me. Oh, gosh, so good. Yeah, so I just feel like um, you're really, like, you know, kind of recharging your batteries. And I, I'm really seeing you enjoying a good book. Um, and even as I'm looking at, at this, she's legit sitting on this sofa. The rest of the world is trying to gain access to her. The rest of the world is like, wait, did you hear about this? Wait, there's this going on. Wait, I need you to do this. And it's like, she's, she just says, listen, I'm... I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to read my book. I'm going to download some new information, some more magazines, or a new novel I've been dying to read that I've been wanting to read on my Kindle. I'm going to explore my spirituality. I'm going to learn, like, you know, learn, do, learn more things that I can apply to my spiritual journey, my spiritual knowledge, my purpose here on earth. That's what it is that you need. And at the time of the full moon, Aquarius, I'm really seeing you doing more information, more information sharing, getting your head down, um, and maybe like like uh, tuning into yourself and kind of quieting out the noise of what's going on in the external world and getting really sharp and clear so that you can rebuild your energy. Because I am seeing the space of you building. It's um, logical, it's mental, it's spiritual building. So this time that you're taking for yourself, Aquarius, to detach and to, to do information and see what the world offers um, and see what other people's perspectives or something that you've been wanting to read, wanting, wanting to learn about, 
it will literally it will restore your energy tenfold it's that's what this aquarius moon is going to be about for you or at least what i'm seeing that's supporting you sagittarius sun moon and rising okay Look, even your last card is the Seven of Swords. It's you disconnecting from the rest of the world um, and being a little selfish with your time and your energy in order to hear and to receive this knowledge that you've been really interested in and intrigued on, okay? So that's what I see for my Sagittarius Sun, Moon, and Rising. Capricorn Sun, Moon, and Rising. Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is what I'm seeing for you. Capricorn, you have the Tower card and you have the Ten of Cups. Now, Capricorn, at the time of me filming for you, again, we have Saturn retrograde. Saturn rules your sign, Jupiter retrograde, and Pluto retrograde. All of these planets are happening in the sign of Capricorn. At the world as you know it, and your stability, and your structure is, and you as a person, is just evolving so rapidly. At the time of the full moon, the full moon happening in the sign of Aquarius, I really want you to focus Capricorn on having some time of joy, pleasure, and play. Capricorns, you guys might actually be finding out that you know you're having children or something is coming in. Truly, Six of Cups. This is the card of children and reuniting and hearing messages from people from the past. Um, it's very soft, it's very pleasant. The devil card, it's you can't escape it, you can't run from it, it's gonna find you. Knight of Wands, it is on its way already. Three of Wands, it's legit on the horizon. You can't, literally, the Three of Wands is, if you're waiting for it, it's right up on the horizon. And the Ace of Wands is another messenger coming in saying, boom, we're here. So Capricorn, there's something that's coming through that I don't want to say that it's going to completely surprise you, although the potential is definitely there. It Okay, so Seven of Wands, it might actually catch you off guard. <laughs> But I don't want you to focus. It's literally there to add to your happiness and add to your joy, Capricorn. Um, and I just feel as though, I feel like you're thinking, I'm not ready. You caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting this. I came a long way. I'm set in my ways. There's this what it was that I wanted for myself. This is how I wanted to do it. And now all of a sudden you want to come up out of nowhere. And, and it's just like, Capricorn, relax. Okay? Maybe if you are caught off guard, if you are at the time of the full moon, if you do hear from a friend, if you do hear from someone from the past, if you do have an unexpected arrival of something or someone, if you do hear new information, Ten of Cups is here, reversed, but still here, saying that maybe, I don't want to say consider it because follow your intuition, follow your, your heart, but see that Capricorn, you know, things happen for a reason and things the universe wants you to be happy and to complete the picture for you. So maybe there's something here that you need to hear or something that you need to do that's going to add on or something that you need to receive. I don't know why Capricorn, but I'm seeing children for you right now. Like I really am getting the space of pregnancy, new birth, new beginnings, especially with the sun moving through the sign of um, Leo right now that rules children and creativity and this new. So maybe it's not a child. Maybe it's something that you're um, creating and adding to this world of value but and also mercury moving through the sign of uh, cancer <sighs> in the, your opposite capricorn sun moon and rising this is literally your opposite um in the sign of cancer so there's something that really wants to be nurtured here maybe consider nurturing it maybe consider comforting it um maybe it's you that needs to be comforted in capricorn but or you i just feel like you would be surprised as if you allow some softness in how good it will feel and it will I just feel a sense of this is not what I was expecting to complete the picture but what if it does complete the picture what if you do hear news at the time of the full moon look four of cups it's not something that you want it's not something that you were hoping for that you felt that you would be happy with but it's here regardless it's coming through page of swords information so Capricorn I really want you guys to think about if it's not something that's coming through then you know that you see set intention for what is missing set intention for it and if it's not like something that you're ready for set intention that you are becoming ready that you are becoming prepared that it wouldn't catch you off guard and be open to receiving this Capricorn. The universe is really saying that you've been really hard on yourself and the world has been very hard with you and things have not 
seem to feel like they're working in your favor, although they are. So if you're being acknowledged in this way, Capricorn, if, if spirit is saying this, then factor in some softness and some kindness, you know, and be open to receiving softness and kindness from other people, how it comes through. So I hope that, that makes sense, Capricorn, because for you guys, it's literally coming in from all different ends. So I, that's just what it is I'm seeing. I just feel like don't be so hard. It's your thoughts. It's how you think. It's how you're communicating with other, with other people. It can really be abrasive on your energy and abrasive towards other, I mean, others. I'm really seeing softness coming through for you, gentleness. All right, Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. Aquarius, this is the sign that the, your full, the full moon is occurring in, and you have strength card and you have knight of pentacles. And also, if you look a little closer, you see the full moon is right in the background. So Aquarius, your willpower is everything. Aquarius, I'm seeing you detaching from yourself. That's really interesting. Uh, Aquarius, I'm seeing you detaching from yourself. This means that you are pulling from a space. This is going to be difficult. As I'm saying this, I feel how difficult this could be. You're pulling from a space of divine strength, not just your strength, not your emotional strength, mental, spiritual, physical strength. You're pulling from a space of divine strength. This full moon, the, 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 the universe is guiding you towards pulling from a space of deeper strength that and allow that to inspire you allow that to you to inspire your steps allow that to it's literally as i'm looking at this the knight of pentacles under the light of the full moon he's taking his hand off of the wheel and literally it's like jesus take the wheel so it's divine you're giving the divine the power to control what you do control your steps and to be open to what the universe delivers to you I feel as though if left to, if you're left on your own with your own strength, you can only get so far and how far you can go can feel like detrimental or can hurt you in some way. The, the, the divine is really trying to align with you. In fact, I'm seeing 1111. The divine is really trying to align with you, to give to you, to support to you. And it's saying like, literally, don't do this all by yourself. We are here to counsel you. We are here to support you. Allow us to be there for you. So Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. At the time of this full moon, your guidance is really to allow the divine to step forward. It's going to be hard for you guys. You have knight of wands and the devil card. You're really used to doing it your way. And you're really using it, used to doing things divinely inspired. Or you see something and you're like, oh... I'm inspired to do it this way, so I'm going to do it. That card was the Hierophant. This is the way that you've always done things. Spirit is truly like, it feels as though you don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're headed. There's, it seems like there's no signs and signals pointing you in any direction, and you're just subconsciously trying to figure things out on your own. And Spirit is like, let us help you. Let us really help you. This has a lot to do with your family. Aquarius or family support or people around you your community your sense of belonging the place that it is that you go to relax to release there is this space of spirit trying to come to you in that space that you go for relaxation and inspire you and help you to give you the tools to to, to light your steps moving forward um, Aquarius no offense but look at this ten of cups card no offense but if you look in the horizon, you will see, if this thing will focus, you will see that there are certain things in your past that have been lit up on fire that are burning to the ground as we speak. Aquarius, you are, you are really called right now, especially at the full moon, there's a lot of energy coming around you. So, and you're almost the zodiacs, like the celestial favorite right now in the eyes of the universe. And that's a good thing and a bad thing. So I just feel like there's certain things that you may have burnt down. There's certain things that you may have destroyed that you may have left that you thought that you left in the past. 
that still feel like they're kind of haunting you and you're just, or you might be trying to run away from them. There's certain things that you feel as though, look, the chariot just showed up. You are trying to get on the road. You are trying to leave. You're trying to disconnect. You are trying to move forward. And if this thing will focus, it does what it wants. So just trust me, this is the chariot card. There are certain things that you're trying to let go and let leave in the past. And, but it's, you, you can only go so far, Aquarius, before the divine comes in and says, where are you running? Where are you running to? Let us help you. If you do it on your own, eight of swords, five of pentacles, you will be left out. There is too much to gain by being divinely inspired. And when you do, Aquarius, look, you're driving yourself crazy. You need rest. Four of Swords and Seven of Cups. You are driving yourself crazy and you're driving other people crazy with your craziness. No offense, no offense. So the Divine is really trying to help you right now to build a better family, to be, build a better support system, to build a better community, better resources, better values, more peace, contentment, organization. I know that you guys are sometimes like things to be a little chaotic, Aquarius, but sometimes it's good to know you know that there's an order in certain things and that's what the universe is trying to give you so allow the universe to inspire you and don't you just take it all on your on your own so what can you do Aquarius you can set intention for the universe to <laughs> you what can you do temperance stop trying to force the outcome stop trying to run stop trying it's very extreme take your time with it um, take the time out with the universe to set intention and they will come through they will show up for you and they will inspire you all right pisces pisces sun moon and rising my loves you have page of pentacles and you have the justice card reversed something is not fair something is off balance something ain't right pisces you feel it Page of Pentacles is about grounding yourself, centering yourself. Things are not balanced. Your head and your heart, your logic is, is blanketed by an illusion. It's, not, it's how you see things, it's how you perceive things, Pisces, and it's also how you are feeling you're getting triggered by certain stuff. Things are off balance. Justice card is reversed. The universe does everything in its power to make sure that things are equal, so that things are fair, and it just doesn't seem like that is happening for you right now, Pisces. Are you creating this, or is someone else creating this? It's not for you to decide. The best way for you to work with this is to ground yourself. Pisces, you can be very much head in the clouds. You can be very much connected to energy. You don't know whose energy you're connecting with, but you're connected with it. At the time of the full moon, the Aquarius full moon, Pisces, you need to detach. As I'm looking at the chart, Pisces, you have Neptune retrograde in your sign. Neptune rules your sign. How you see things, how you think about things, how you perceive things, how you're feeling about things is coming up from deep within the wells of the your emotions and the back of your mind all of those things are coming through look as as I'm pulling this card for you there is this little boy and the messages that he receives and how he what he's hearing what he's seeing what he's feeling what he's saying what he's doing um, and then also we have this hand falling out of the car these are things that are subconsciously spilling over into your, your reality and impacting what you say what you do how you do it Pisces ground yourself and focus before you erratically make changes especially at the time of the aquarius full moon ground yourself pause center before you react okay all right you guys so thank you so much to everyone who tuned into that um again all the timestamps will be down below um if you want to connect with me you can do that on my website bahadilife.com make sure that you are subscribed to this youtube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I will see you <laughs> in my next one. Spirit was like, listen, if you're stressed out, if you're bugging, if you need inspiration, guidance, go to her. She gives advice and clarity and she will help you. She is the nurse for your wounds. All right, my loves, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.